your, uh, you know, your, your older pastors? Any of you have any weed problems? You know, maybe a fertility uh, you know, issue. So if we look at you know, broadly weed problems, in the next three to six weeks, that's the best time to go after the hard to kill perennial weeds, things like dock, you know, thistles. Because in another three weeks or so, those plants are going to be preparing for winter. And they're going to be moving food reserves from the top growth from the leaves to the root. And in order to kill a perennial plant, you need to kill the root. So uh, you know, weed control. And kind of interesting in talking, uh, you know, I was talking with my brother last night. He said, you know, I sprayed that hay field last year, and I got all these weeds back in it this year. Where did it come from? Well, you know, he didn't do weed control for a number of years, and a lot of those weeds, particularly docks, went to seed, and they produced a mountain of seed. So he killed them a year ago, almost a year and a half ago, but they're coming back, you know, from seed. So a single application isn't going to control weed. So if you begin early and you, know, you don't get a complete control, you have another option or two options to come back and do the job. There's a real good website, and uh, say this will be uh, you know keep the hand out. This is an interactive website that if you can identify, you know what weeds are in your pasture, you go to this website, and uh, it will give you a list of herbicide materials, the relative effectiveness, and the rates of application. So it's a real good you know, website to uh, give you information on how to control crop and weeds. And then fertility uh, you know, deficiencies. <coughs> One of the things that you know, I really want to emphasize, do not attempt to see if you have a fertility issue. Because what's going to happen, you go out there, you've got low pH, you've got low fertility, you lost the plants that were there, you know, initially, you plant new ones, what's going to happen to those? They're going to be starved. So there's little point in reseeding if you're not willing to apply the recommended amount of lime and fertilizer to correct the problem. pH, and you know, Dave went through this, pH affects uh, availability and the plant's utilization of minerals. Phosphorus is primarily uh, critical for seedling establishment, seedling development. Potassium is really plays a major role in maintaining legumes, and more and more we're learning that potassium is critical in maintaining grasses. And for years, we never really talked much about the need for potassium in grasses, but especially with orchard grass. Potassium is just as critical for grasses, especially orchard grass, as it is for you know, alfalfa. And these materials, especially if you're going to do a no-till seed, soil is an excellent filter. So if you're putting material on top of the ground, it's going to take several years for that to move. It probably only moves a half an inch to an inch a year. So we need to get those materials on ahead of time, particularly if we're doing a no-till seeding and we're not going to be mixing that you know, with the ground. What do you think this uh, you know, represents? You see some uh, you know, green clumps or spots. You hear you see it uh, you know, a little bit closer. What do you think this represents? Yeah, those are manure spots. And what does it indicate for the rest of the pasture? Need more fertilizer. Need more nitrogen. So what you see, uh, what you see around this area is nitrogen deficient. What you see in this manure uh, you know, pile and Manure can contribute up to 500 pounds of nitrogen, the equivalent of 500 pounds of nitrogen uh, you know, per meter. So uh, the, uh, what you see here is you know, nitrogen deficiency. So when you see that in your pasture, that's an indication that your pasture is nitrogen deficient and uh, you, uh, you need to apply some nitrogen fertilizer. 